Hello! In this tutorial we'll be looking at samples, how to import them into an element and how to find them in the library and all that sort of thing. Fantastic! The whole point of this sound set was that we were building a custom dragon, a brown swamp dragon instead of a red city dragon, fire dragon thing. Excellent! So here is the element that plays the dragon roars. Okay, you can see the timing there we talked about in the previous element and we talked about the order that these samples play in this sound set. Excellent, in the element playlist we can play these individual samples. Fantastic. And sample them, but we want to get rid of those samples. So we're going to hit the little red button here to remove, 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 remove. Whoops, <laughs> I clicked the wrong thing because the window shifted. Okay, remove, remove, remove. It's saying file not found because I'm actually clicking too quickly and clicking a sample that I've actually already deleted. So, see the little blue line? It's not actually visible, is it? Let's make it visible. There we go. That little blue line up there shows the server working and doing the job and updating. And if I click too quickly, so I'm going to click that twice. Boom. The second request to delete that sample actually raises an error, which I can just dismiss. Good, there we go. It's all gone. Now we're ready to import our own samples. I'm going to go to the element here. I'm going to change the name to Brown Dragon Roars. <laughs> Excellent. And I'm going to click this Import Samples button. And this is where it's super, super cool. I've got a directory here of samples that I'm going to select and simply drag onto there. Oh, how awesome! Right, what license? I can either select created by uploader, which will tell the server and attach to um, the sample forevermore that it was created by me and whatever my name is. I can claim that it was uh, this sample is being used under Creative Commons Zero license. If you've downloaded this sample from like a source like freesound.org and uh, being given away by Creative Commons Zero, then you can indicate that there. You can say that it's Creative Commons Attribution. This sample is used under Creative Commons Attribution license from source from the sample, and you have to name the sample there according to that license, and also uh, credit the creator's name. Or you can just copy the sample name. Uh, into here, so it'll actually appear as Fire Drake Raw Number One, Rog Red McGrunner, Pizocon, or I can say other, and put in my own details. And my the details are actually that this sample. Uh, sorry, so so uh, Brown Dragon. It's good to put the name of the sample in the credits so that we can follow it. Brown Dragon Raws uh, performed by. Roger Reg Mac Reynolds at PaizoCon. Fantastic. Now that will be usable if this content's ever proposed as Creative Commons, uh, not as Creative Commons, as community content. That is very, very important. Please be careful about um, making sure your attributions are correct and that you're actually saying where the sample was sourced from and whether it's available to be used for public use. If it's got a correct attribution that um, doesn't prohibit it, it can be then used as Creative Commons um, community content. Right, upload samples. Cool, the samples are going up. It actually gives you a, tells you exactly what's happening. Uploaded, 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 uploaded. Fantastic, if there's any problems here, it should raise an error and let you know. You can clear this big long list, clear and close. Now if we look down in the playlist we shall find there's a whole lot of samples there. Fantastic! And if we click on the sample you'll be able to see that attribution which you can still now edit. You can't edit the attributions of samples that don't belong to you because you didn't upload them but these ones I can actually correct. I can also correct the uh, file name Fire Drake Raw and you can see here the little spinner it says transcode pending. Transcode pending. That means this file is still being worked on by the server to create the different uh, formats that are required for delivery to the various different devices. If I turn it on, you see that it is running. All right. Oh, excellent. So <laughs> That's a much more brown sound, isn't it? Um, so you'll notice that, that um, the, the creator now has the uh, samples it needs to be able to play those sounds, but maybe the transcoding is still happening for other types of devices. Right, now, I've imported those directly into 
this element, but I have an element down here which is red dragon raw. There we are. This is a one shot. I'm going to change that to brown dragon raw. Excellent. And I want to get those samples because these are still the red ones. Okay. Oop, I did the same thing again. Give it a chance to catch up, Ben. I could just duplicate this Brown Dragon Raw's element and then turn it into a one shot, but I want to show you how to find the samples in the sample library. What was it? Fire Drake Raw. Okay, I'm going to open the library. Check that you can still see what's happening. Excellent. Samples. Fire Drake Raw. Let's see. Okay, Fire Drake Raw. Yep, that's the ones I just imported. Excellent. I've got focus on the element. Everything's getting a little squishy. Okay, uh, Brown Dragon Raw. Excellent. I'm going to add and add and add. By the way, note this little uh, indicator there that says it's my sample, my own private sample. Add, add, add. Notice also that the transcoding is finished. You can tell that because it says the duration of the sample. Oh, these are these are the other samples. I don't need those ones. Do, 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 do. Right. Let's trigger it. <gasps> Excellent. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, I think that's all you need to know about importing samples. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. See this button here, enable 3D positioning. If that is checked, then this sample can be positioned according to all these positioning settings in the element. If it's unchecked, the sample will be played back in perfect stereo in the left and right channels. And that is the setting you want to use for music tracks. So if this were a music track, uh, you know, with left, right stereo mix, and I want it to appear in its full glory, not positioned sort of 20 meters away, uh, you know, with reverb of the environment applied or whatever, then you uh, might actually want to um, set that setting. I think that's all. I'm going to talk in the next tutorial a little bit about the library, and then I'm beginning to run out of topics. It's all very straightforward, isn't it? Lovely. Enjoy building.